In this video, we'll tackle the second type of stress, which is shear stress. In shear stress, we are interested in the tendency of one surface or area to slide past the other. It is produced by a force parallel to an area. And then we have three general types of shear, single shear, double shear, and punching shear. Now, forces parallel to the area resisting the force cause shearing stress, and it differs from tensile and compressive stresses which are caused by forces perpendicular to the area. Let's recall that. Now the other word for shearing stress is tangential stress. First, I will discuss what single shear is. Single shear occurs when the applied force or load acts on a single plane within the material, causing it to deform or fail along that plane. This means that the force is applied in a direction parallel to only one surface or plane of the material. For example, if you push or pull on one end of a rod or beam so that it bends or deforms along a single plane, you are subjecting it to single shear. We generally have this configuration for single shear. We have two plates connected together by a bolt. Now these are our plates and this is our bolt. Notice that if we pull the plates this way, this part of the bolt will have the tendency to slide past each other because you are pulling it here and also here. And so this has the tendency to break and thus it is now subjected to shear. Let's remember that that in stresses, we are interested in the internal force. And so to analyze the internal force in the bolt, we can make a cutting plane along the cross section at which the bolt is subjected to shear, which is essentially right here, because that's the part where our plates meet. And then now, since we have made this cut, let's try to isolate the bolt. It will look like this. Now isolating the bolt, this is what will happen. Notice that if we will transmit the load P, they will be acting here. This is for the P right here, and this one is from here. Now again, our cutting plane is at the junction point of the two plates, because that's where the bolt is subjected to shear. And then we may consider the top part of the cutting plane, or the bottom part. Now let's just consider the top part, which is this one. Now essentially, if I will consider the top part, it will initially look like this. However, this is not in equilibrium because we need to have an internal force resisting this load. And so that's why we will develop a shear force. This is the resulting internal force and then it will act parallel to the bolt. Now, just to recall, parallel is a term used in geometry to describe two or more lines, planes or surfaces that are always the same distance apart and never intersect. Now if we have this line and this line, these two are always the same distance apart and then they never intersect and thus they are parallel. The same way with this one. These two lines are parallel. And so notice that our P is acting horizontally. And so essentially, this is the parallel area to it. And so we will consider that area in our analysis of the shear stress. But note again that we are considering the cross-sectional area here. If we view this part of the section from the bottom or the top, we can see a circular area. And so if you want to make sense of that, it will look like this. This is the part of the bolt subjected to shear. And then this is actually our parallel area, which is just the cross-section of the bolt. Now in most cases, we will just be viewing our systems in 2D. But this is the isometric view so that you will be able to appreciate what we are trying to solve. Now, I just removed the bolt heads here so that you will be able to make a better sense of the part of the bolt subjected to shear, which is essentially this one, considering that this is the center and then it will be at this point. Now, aside from single shear, our bolts or rivets may also experience double shear. Essentially, shearing stresses are commonly found in bolts pins, and rivets used to connect various structural members and machine components. And then double shear happens when, as we make two cuts to reveal the internal force in our bolt, there will be two resisting areas. And so that's why in here, we have two times the shear area because we have two resisting shear areas. And so I will just explain this further later. Now, notice that at the junction point of the two plates, we can pass two cutting sections, one right here and another one right here. Now, if we will isolate the bolt, we have this free body diagram wherein we will transmit the load coming from plate A and plate B and then we will move that here. Now keep in mind that this body is in equilibrium because we have P going to the right and the two forces here when added together will just equal P. Now take note that these are not two forces of P but P is just the total force going to the left. And so don't be confused with this one. Now, if we make two cutting planes, we can actually consider the top part, the bottom part, or the middle part. However, if we try to make sense of the figure, 
if we have a bolt right here and then we are pulling at the plate from both sides then this will be the portion that will be subjected to shear because they will have the tendency to slide past each other because of this plate which tends to tear this apart and so we will actually consider the middle and so isolating that cut we have this one now we have force p from this one and then because we have two resisting areas there will be two shear forces and so considering this free body diagram we can sum up horizontal forces and so we have summation of horizontal forces that's 2v is equal to p and so expressing v in terms of p we have v is equal to p over 2. Now let me explain the formula of double shear. Basically this just comes from tau is equal to shear force over area. So we have tau is equal to v divided by the shear area. However our shear force is p divided by 2. And so we can just actually change this one. And so we have tau is equal to p over 2 divided by a v. And so we have a v here. And so that's why we have this formula. Or you may also interpret this as the resisting area of shear is two areas, the top one and the bottom one. Now this configuration right here is also in double shear because bolt EG and bolt HJ are both in double shear. In simple terms, you can say that a connection is in double shear when you have three plates connected together by a bolt or when you can cut the bolt at two planes and there will be two resisting areas involved. That's how you can identify. And so if you want to make sense of this, we can consider bolt HJ. And so we have this one. We have our force F transmitted from this one. And then if you will consider the middle part of the bolt, we have two resisting areas, which is this one and this one. Next, we have our punching shear. Now to understand this, try to imagine that you're holding a cardboard box with a lot of things inside it. If you will not support the cardboard box at the base, then it will have the tendency to fail by shearing around the point of contact. And thus, a hole will be created at the bottom of the cardboard box and then the objects inside will fall. That's the basic definition of punching shear. Now, in mechanics, examples of this truss usually involve shear in a metal sheet produced by a punch or simply a puncher. Now let's say this is the top view of our punch and then this is the top view of our metal sheet. So this is our puncher and this is our metal sheet. And then let's try to visualize that we want to make a hole around this metal sheet because perhaps we want to use it in our connections. And so our system will look like this. Again this is our puncher and then this is our metal sheet and then we want to make this hole. Now let's see the punch in action. First, let's place the punch against the metal sheet. Notice that if we will apply a vertical force large enough to make a hole out of the sheet, it will look like this. Let's apply the downward force and then we'll actually make a hole here. And then this is what will happen. At this point, the punch has pierced through the metal sheet and thus there is a portion of the sheet that's punched out, which is this one. Now let's recall that shear stress involves areas parallel to the force. Now, if you look at the cut portion, which part of this is subjected to shear stress? Is it this one or this one? Notice that it will not be this anymore because this is our P and then notice that this is perpendicular to our force P and so we are not interested in that because that's only for the actual stress. Rather, the area we'll consider here is this part, this one, this one, and these parts at the middle because notice that this is parallel to our force P and so if you want to visualize that properly, we have this configuration. Again, this is the hole punched from the sheet and then our shear area is the one colored in green, which is this one. Note that this area can be obtained by getting the perimeter of the circle or the sum of the sides, which is this one, and then we'll multiply that by the thickness, which is this one. So the perimeter times the thickness will account for this area. And so that will be the area that we'll consider in punching shear. Now just to generalize this one, our AV will be the perimeter of the cross section multiplied by the thickness. The thickness we are considering here is the thickness of the plate or the metal sheet because we are punching the hole from that one. And so to better understand these concepts, we'll try to solve a problem. Now for our first problem, we are asked what force is required to punch a 20 mm diameter hole in a plate that is 25 mm thick? Now we are given the shear strength of the plate which is 350 meganewton per m squared. Now shear strength is just the allowable stress. However, this is for shear. And so we have tau is equal to 
the shear force divided by the shear area. Now our tau is 350mn per m squared which is just MPA and so this is 350mPA or 350Newton per mm squared. Now the hole punched out has a diameter of 20mm because this is what we are forming and so this is 20mm that's the diameter and then we are also given the thickness of the plate which is this one and also this one. Again, the thickness is just equal because this is punched from the plate. And so applying that here, we have 350 and the Newton per mm squared is equal to V divided by, again, this is our P here, which is the applied force. And then we essentially have a resisting force acting upward, which is equal to V. And so now, what is this area? Again, that area will be the perimeter of the cross section multiplied by the thickness. Now for circular sections, the perimeter is called the circumference and then this is often denoted by C. And then our formula for that one is in terms of the radius, we have 2 pi r. And then in terms of the diameter, we have pi times d. Now since we are given the diameter, we will just use this formula. These two will just give you the same values. And so again, our shear area is the perimeter which is pi d multiplied by the thickness which we will label as d. And so we have here AV which is pi times the diameter which is 20 mm multiplied by the thickness which is 25 mm and so this is 25 mm. And so now we will be able to solve the force V. Using our calculators we have V is equal to 350 times pi times 20 and then times 25 and so that's 549778.71 and so our V is 549778.71 and then our unit is newtons because this is newtons and then mm squared will just cancel. Now usually if we have large forces we'll convert that into kn in order to simplify the result and so dividing this by 1000 we can convert that to kn and so let's divide this by 1000 we have 549.78 kn and so this is our answer. However, this is also a correct answer depending on the unit required.